I'm going to talk to you about the Uta Codex, or sometimes called the Uta Gospels. Uh, it is um, a codex, of course, is a book that is bound on one side, so it has pages, uh, just like a modern book, um, as opposed to a scroll or rotulus. Um, so this is the Uta Codex, and it's called that because the patron is Uta, who is the abbess of uh, the convent or abbey at Niedermünster in Regensburg. This is, well, someone called it the pinnacle of Ottonian manuscript illumination, and I think that's absolutely correct. Uh, it is very rich or dense, uh, both with the text, because it seemed to have multiple levels of meaning, and also with the uh, images. Uh, they're very complex uh, and incredibly beautiful and skillfully done. It is, it is in every sense, a very rich manuscript. Um, what we'll see is that the images and the inscriptions work together to create deeper theological significance. Now, I'm not going to try to go through every inscription, but I will give you a selection and an example. Um, and the book that I'm getting a lot of this from is Adam Cohen's book on the Uta Codex. And so if you'd like to have more information, we do have that in the ETSU library. Okay, Uta, sometimes they'll spell it uh, U-O-T-A or U-D-A, as well as the more common U-T-A, um, is the abbess, as we said, is the abbess of the Niedermünster convent in Regensburg, which is in Bavaria, southern Germany. Uh, today, the manuscript is in the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek in Munich, in Munich. Uh, and I thought I should maybe tell you a little bit about these numbers that go with manuscripts. Um, every manuscript has a kind of designation and a number. And unlike Library of Congress or Dewey Decimal System, they are not standard throughout different libraries. Uh, every library really has their own. Uh, but generally, when you're identifying a manuscript, sometimes we have names, like the Uta Codex. Uh, but sometimes, for example, we'll say the Codex Aurus, and there's a lot of golden codices. So, uh, you know, which one? And then you can give the name of the uh, library or museum or church or whoever owns it, the collection that it's in, uh, you'll be giving the uh, city and the name of the collection. And then they will have various designations. In the case of uh, München, um, they have the CLM, which stands for Codex Latinus Monasinus, or a monastic Latin codex. And then there's the number. Uh, you do not need to know the numbers in this class. I just thought sometimes you see these things and nobody explains it to you. So that's why I'm explaining it. Um, this also has, uh, you can see the, the dimensions. Uh, I always thought it was a really huge manuscript and I was surprised when I saw the dimensions. It's a fairly small manuscript. Uh, the first picture that you're looking at is metal. It's and jewels, and, uh, gems. Uh, polished stones, and uh, as you can see, this is not the manuscript itself. What this is, is the cover to the bookcase. So rather than being the actual cover of the book, um, the book goes into a box, and uh, there is this beautiful golden cover on the box. But uh, we want to look at the, a little bit more about the manuscript. Um, and I have here a little detail. We'll be seeing the entire image later. And this is, this is uh, Uta, uh, as she is holding out her book. Uh, she's offering her book to the Virgin Mary, as we'll see uh, when we look at the entire image. Uh, this is a very complex Ottonian manuscript, both visually and theologically. And it probably ties into the fact that the Niedermünster convent was reformed uh, by instituting the Benedictine rule. Now, what do we mean by a reformed convent? Well, sometimes abbeys, convents, monasteries become lax. In other words, um, the nuns and monks aren't following a very strict rule. Uh, they become more worldly. 
Uh, and in the case of Niedermunster, it was a group of canonesses, and they did not have a rule as strict as the Benedictine rule. So the bishop decided that the convent should be reformed. And so he brought in the Benedictine rule, which was um, the rule of, at this time, this was the rule of most uh, monasteries and convents. Uh, later on, there's all different orders, uh, but uh, the Benedictine rule was the, uh, what, the most prevalent uh, for much of the Middle Ages. Now, one of the interesting things is that there is a book uh, which is the rule, the, the rule book for the Niedermunster con convent. And in it, it does have a picture of Uta. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have a scan of that to show you. I could find a black and white illustration, but that was all. But uh, that suggests that Uta may have been very much instrumental in reforming the convent and establishing this new rule. Now, one of the questions we always have to ask since we're taking a course in women artists is who illustrated this codex? If this is you know, like the greatest work of Ottonian uh, manuscript illumination, uh, you know, is it the nuns in Uta's convent? Or would it be monks from the nearby St. Emmeran Monastery? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Earlier, I said, you know, usually when we see a male name, an abbot, who is the patron, uh, who has ordered the book, uh, we assume that the book was illuminated, uh, was written and illuminated in the uh, abbey or monastery uh, for which the, the patron uh, was the, the leader. Uh, was the abbot. And the same should usually be said of uh, when the nun is the patron. However, we will say that in this case, there may be some evidence that it wasn't the nuns. It could have been the monks. In fact, that's what most people just state. They just accept this. Um, and in Conan's book uh, on the Uta Codex, he argues that uh, the Uta Codex handwriting is the same handwriting as found in another manuscript, which is signed by the scribe Hartwick of St. Emmeran. And uh, he points out that uh, Bischoff, who was an earlier writer writing about this, uh, makes the suggestion or really says that probably Hartwick was the designer of the codex. Um, we don't know that. Uh, even if it is his handwriting that would indicate that he is the scribe, uh, does it mean that he did the illustrations as well? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it does have this, it certainly suggests that the um, illuminer may, would have been in the same monastery as the scribe. So the handwriting evidence is pretty good evidence. I mean, we can, we can think of various things. Um, one of the ideas, though, that I have been playing around with, and it's only speculation, is the fact that this is, as we said, very complex. And it also, as we'll see, has uh, some iconography, uh, some subject matter, some symbolism, that is particularly related to the relationship of the abbess uh, to her piety, uh, to the sisters under her rule. And could Uta have had something to do with the planning of the manuscript? Now, to me, that seems pretty logical, particularly given some of the uh, iconography that refers to her, as we'll see. Now, one of the things um, is that Regensburg, the town in which both St. Emmeren and uh, Niedermunster uh, are, and there's a number of convents and monasteries. It's uh, uh, very rich as far as uh, uh, church institutions. Um, but in Regensburg, um, this, be this became a center for manuscript illumination uh, during the Ottonian period, the 10th and uh, early 11th centuries. Um, and St. Emmeran's monastery uh, is associated with the most lavish of these 
uh, codices, including, of course, the Uta Codex, as we've, we've already heard. Um, there's certain things that you do find in them. Uh, geometric shapes, which uh, we do find throughout Ottonian art. Uh, ge geometric shapes such as circles and uh, diamond shapes uh, uh, and uh, other geometric shapes that serve to organize the composition um, and to put the images and the text in relationship to one another. The decorations are extremely ornate, uh, particularly the Uta Gospels. And one of the things um, that really connects uh, some manuscripts to St. Emmeran is the influence of a Carolingian manuscript. This is from the late 9th century, uh, the Codex Aris of Charles the Bald, or the Codex Aris of St. Emmeran, uh, which uh, from the very end of the 10th century on uh, was in the monastery at St. Emmeran. So let's just take a look at a few of the pictures that I'm able to find showing you some other Regensburg manuscripts. Uh, one is uh, the Igberti Codex, uh, which has much simpler, very, very beautiful uh, uh, um, scenes uh, from the Bible, very, very clear. Uh, the more complex image is the dedication page, because you can see all this interlaced pattern around it. Uh, and so you have uh, the, uh, presumably the abbot offering his book to the saint here. Uh, down below, I have a picture of uh, the Duke Henry the Wrangler, or Henry the Quarrelsome. Uh, uh, and this is from the Niedermünster rule book. So right there, uh, around the end of the 10th century. Um, this is the book that has a full page image of Uta, very frontally placed with design behind her. Unfortunately, I did not have a scan to show you of that. Uh, and uh, it is believed that both of these manuscripts were written in the St. Emmeran Scriptorium. Uh, even though the patronage of the rule book seems to be uh, partially the Duke uh, and uh, partially Uta herself, because uh, they are depicted there. Um, this is a very lavish manuscript, uh, the Sacramentary of Henry II. And here we're seeing a kind of uh, coronation page with the, uh, Christ himself uh, crowning the emperor. Uh, and as you can see, it has geometric uh, forms, uh, rectangular forms, and of course the uh, almond-shaped mandorla or body halo around Christ, which you find over and over again in medieval art. Uh, it has a lot of uh, pattern and decoration. It's very rich with gold and uh, bright colors. Um, and this is uh, believed to be associated with the St. Emmeran Scriptorium. However, uh, when I compared these pages, I didn't have, of course, a uh, coronation page for the Uta Codex because uh, it's not, uh, it's rich enough to be an imperial manuscript with all the gold, but it, uh, it is not uh, an imperial manuscript. Uh, so I just put a the crucifixion up because you have Christ uh, in this uh, almond shape. Uh, that was the best parallel I could find. Uh, the Uta Codex is more complex in both the images and the decoration, and with the texts uh, that enrich uh, and inform us about the images, uh, it becomes very theologically complex. So, and these seem to be the highest quality images of all the Regensburg manuscripts. And um, I'm not an expert in Ottonian art, uh, but I don't know that anyone has suggested that the hand of the artist can be found in another manuscript, so uh, quite interesting. You know, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say, yes, it must have been the nuns, but uh, whoever did it, whether it was the patron, it's female patronage, we have no doubt about it, it's female patronage. Uh, the artist may very well have been male. Uh, we just don't know. I guess that's the, the prevailing opinion.